Hello, I'm Lexington Times web editor Paul Oliva. I'm here with Mayor Linda Gordon today. Mayor Gordon, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Nice to meet you and be with you. Yeah, likewise. Um, so you weren't able to make it last mm -hmm. week. Uh, you did have an excused absence, though. Uh, what were you doing instead? Well, I believe that was when I was uh, greeting President and Mrs. Biden at mm. the airport. Uh, when they flew into Bluegrass Airport and then they um, <clears throat> helicoptered to Eastern Kentucky to see some of the flood flooding and some of the folks there. So I, I did have a good excuse. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, was it your first time meeting a sitting president? Uh, yes, it was. First time to meet a sitting president. They were very cordial. Uh, we had a really nice brief discussion. Mm. Chat. Okay. Yeah, so in fourth grade, my teacher, uh, former teacher of the year, Miss Allgaier, uh, took our class to see Bill Clinton at UK. Uh, that was in 1996. Uh, so we, we have that in common. Mm -hmm. I remember when he came. Um, gosh, in 1996, you were in fourth grade? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so, um, I, I want to move on. Uh, your fellow city elected official, David Kloiber, uh, gave me an impressive response when I asked him what his favorite fictional character was. Uh, so I'd like to ask you the same thing. But do I have to have just one? No, you can have as many as you like. Well, I, um, I read a lot. I've been a fairly prolific reader since about maybe third grade. I love reading. And so I have a number of uh, female sleuths mm. I really like. Um, I don't know if you've heard of any of these um, theories, but uh, the number one ladies detective agency, are you familiar with that? I, uh, I don't believe I am. No. no. Well, well, the, um, the sleuth, these are all set in Botswana. And they're very interesting because they're mysteries and they weave philosophy in. And so um, okay. Precious Ramatswe is the main detective and she's quite a strong woman. And then uh, I'm a big fan of David of Dana Stabeno. Have you ever heard of her? I don't she, believe I have now. She writes mysteries that are set in Alaska. Oh. And um, her uh, main sleuth is Kate Shugak, who is a native Alaskan. And mm. so these are, I, I love uh, mysteries anyway, but. What was the name are, of that author again? Uh, uh, Dana Stabenow. Okay. And uh, the, the women sleuths are, um, they're very clever. They put the pieces together like a puzzle they're persistent and um, really work well with people. Mm. And I love that kind of a, of a mystery. I like a lot of different books, but um, those in particular, I'm especially kind of hooked on. I read every one that comes out. <laughs> okay, uh, very, very good. Uh, I'm, I'm also a big reader. Um, so thank you for that response. Oh. Uh, last softball here. UK oh. moving day is today, and Coach Mark Stoops' football squad is looking quite impressive. Ask the mayor, do you have any stern directives for incoming freshmen who may want to over-celebrate the football and or basketball team's potential postseason victories? And is UK a football school or a basketball school? It's both. Oh, <laughs> People okay. People should know this by now. It's football <laughs> in the fall, and then it's basketball in the winter. And we've got, you know, the women's volleyball team won the national championship. I mean, you can just name all these sports off, right, that are really good here. So it's both. I agree. I, I would agree with that statement. Um, all right, we're going to move on to, to some more serious content. Uh, this is on a lot of people's minds. Um, the, it, we had a very eventful weekend uh, in Lexington starting around Friday at 2.30 p.m. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what occurred in, in downtown and in the surrounding area and uh, what was the city's response? Now, are you refer referring to the person who uh, was shooting at short and... 
I think Elm Tree Lane. Yes. I, so my understanding, uh, based on uh, conversations, is that there was uh, an exchange of gunfire uh, near Short Street, and then uh, a car chase that went through some some areas. I don't. I don't think there was an exchange of gunfire. Okay. I mean, I I think um, a lot of the facts in that aren't out yet. Okay. Um, but. It's my understanding from what is public, and it was in the, I, I think it was in the Herald Leader this morning, uh, someone was shooting, and um, of course it's still being investigated, but the, the man was apprehended. The police uh, chased him and apprehended him. Okay. And I don't know other details about it. Okay. Um... He's in jail. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, do you have any information you can provide on um, the open homicides for 2020? I, I believe there's 14 of them. Uh, there's a, a guy at AH Datalytics who monitors murder rates in American cities with populations over 200,000. Um, okay. And he says there's 14 and that Lexington's murder rate has climbed 21.7%. 21.74% over this time last year and is on pace to be deadlier per capita than New York and Detroit combined in 2020. Um, uh, well, I can tell you what I know because I did bring some of the statistics that we have that are um, pretty current uh, through um, August 10th, which was uh, late last week. Uh, we had 28 homicides. Mm -hmm. One sort of glaring statistic about that is nine of those were domestic violence or domestic violence related. Mm -hmm. And last year in 2021, we had zero domestic violence related shootings. Mm. Uh, this is a big change. These are uh, intimate partners. Um, and, and this is very concerning because it's a little bit different angle on those. So nine of them this year have been related to domestic violence. Um, and those were all solved, correct? The domestic well, violence related ones? I, I don't know if they've all been solved. I don't know the status of them except to tell you that 15 of the 28 have been cleared, have okay. been solved. Okay. Um, I don't know the uh, breakdown on how many of the domestic violence, whether there are certain perpetrators out there uh, still still being sought or not. But of the of the 28 this year, 15 have been solved and okay. cleared. Now, um, so I want to know. I reviewed a report uh, recently that said one of the recent downtown shootings was narcotics related. Um, are some of these shootings narcotics related? Is there gang activity um, surrounding it? And then um, can you weigh in on the root causes of uh, narcotics related violence? Well, well, this may take a while, right? Absolutely. So, but it's an important question because um, to my way of thinking, public safety is the top priority of our city. We need to be a safe city. And if you generally, if you look across the country, we are a safe city. Now, um, so police would tell you that in about um, a very high percentage, I don't know if it's 95%, 97% of the actual homicides the people on both sides of the weapon know each other. They already have mm -hmm. a previous relationship. Mm -hmm. And some of it is over drugs. Uh, some of it is disputes about women. Some mm -hmm. of it is gang related mm -hmm. or group related. Um, the police will also tell you that like across the country, they have never seen as many guns as there are currently in the hands of people who live here. Mm -hmm. um, and part of that, you know, there's a lot involved, but our police 
um, get reports of stolen weapons a lot because people leave a weapon in their car and then they leave the car unlocked. That's not a secure way to store a weapon, according no, to what I've no. heard. And so we've got that going on. We so are you doing anything to crack down on the, I am okay with responsible gun owners. Can we crack down yes. on mediocre gun owners? Well, I'm also okay with responsible gun owners. Um, we've tried uh, gun buybacks in the past and they don't work very well because the police buy them back and there's a certain uh, there are laws about what they can do with them. And ultimately, a lot of them end up back on the street. Yeah, and statistics um, show they're generally the ones turned in were never used in crimes. That's right. That's right. And we have also had, um, we've had programs where we give out gun locks. And um, we've done several of these over the years. Uh, one of the things that I think is going to make a big difference is our One Lexington program. And I don't know if you're familiar with it, but what we're doing through Divine Karama, who runs it and his mm -hmm. team, is we are going to the root causes and we're going to the juveniles mm -hmm. because we all know that at age 18 or 20 or 25, somebody just doesn't pick up a weapon and decide to shoot somebody. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of underlying issues. So what Divine is working on is um, he's developed a large network of male mentors. He's got at least 100 now because we know a lot of these vulnerable kids who can choose the pathway of violence have no father in the home. And mm -hmm. so that's a big issue. And we've also started um, done a lot in the last three years to attend to the mental health issues, which were, uh, everybody would say were exacerbated by the pandemic. Oh, absolutely. Yes. And um, so, so we're working with New Vista and our police are partnering with New Vista to, they, they give mental health services so that when the police, um, come upon someone who seems to have a mental health issue, they can pull in the new Vista people and work with them on that. Um, we have a lot going on in terms of um, our street outreach people are able to connect some of these vulnerable families with kids who can choose a violent path or not. Mm -hmm. They can connect them with resources because a lot of people are in situations where um, they may need help with rent. They may, may be unemployed. I mean, there's a mm -hmm. whole host of issues. So um, we're working a lot in that area, have put a fair number of resources into affordable housing, mm -hmm. uh, eviction services, homelessness. I mean, all those kinds of things. And it's a constant, um, it's a constant focus, I would say, of our government. Okay. Um, I don't know if that helps you with that. That is, uh, was a very in informative statement, uh, and I appreciate uh, everything you just said. Uh, thank you. Um, this next question comes in from a Reddit user. Um, going to read this word for word because they had the best question. Uh, they say, I would like to respectfully inquire about what is being done about affordable housing in Lexington. We have too many homeless people that deserve a place to live. People are panhandling on every corner of Lexington, and oftentimes they can present a safety hazard. I almost hit someone with my car at the Nicholasville Road Walmart because they were out in the road panhandling. It looks bad on Lexington to have so many displaced citizens, and it's morally wrong to allow people to suffer when they don't have to. What is being done to remediate this ongoing issue? Okay, that's a great question. And let me attend to the panhandlers first mm -hmm. and then homelessness second, mm -hmm. because we know that they don't necessarily overlap. And I um, I know that some folks are aware that some of the panhandlers are uh, dropped off here each day and they have their certain area that they cover and then they go home. And what mm -hmm. we tried, the council tried to do several years ago was um, 
make an ordinance that made panhandling illegal. And the court said it's a freedom of speech and we couldn't make it illegal. So what the council was able to do was make it illegal in the median of streets because that presents a greater danger. We started a rather innovative program before the pandemic. It shut down during the pandemic and now it's back. And that is our panhandling van where we go around each day and pick up panhandlers and then they go to work, they get paid for uh, doing things like cleaning up, uh, you know, streets and roads and picking up trash and that kind of thing. And we pay them. And, uh, but the, the other issue that you talked about was homelessness or the person on Reddit yes. talked about was homelessness. And we, have a full-blown Office of Homelessness uh, Intervention and Prevention. And so uh, each year in the budget, I put a significant amount of money in there, but I recommended to the council this time, and they uh, agreed and voted to support $10 million um, to go into that, or more money to go into that. Uh, 10 million is not the number that that was our affordable housing. But mm -hmm. um, we have a rather wide network of partners and uh, what we call continuum of care for our homelessness. And our numbers in about the last eight years have gone from 1,500 to 700. And the reason we know that is because every year in the coldest time of the year, around February, we do a count because that's when most of the homeless people go into shelters. And so um, we work with all of our, um, our emergency and transient housing partners, and we have quite a few of them to be sure that we are getting people into housing. And uh, one of our great successes here is with our veterans whenever we find a veteran homeless person, we have a system they go into with housing first, mm. and then they get the resource help that they need. So we work on this every day. And part of our limitation with the uh, back to the panhandlers is the law. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's very difficult that way because we're restricted by those court orders. Yes. But anyway, we do work on this every day. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Um, so I want to be respectful of your time because you are mayor and uh, we, you blocked off 20 minutes for me. Uh, we're, we've gone over now. So uh, I'll let you have the last word here. Well, um, gosh, there's so much to talk about. Um, I, I did want to talk real quickly about our um, ARPA money because a lot of people are interested in that, the American yes. Rescue money that was one-time money that we received. And uh, we put 10 million into affordable housing. We put 10 million into parks. We discovered during the pandemic that the parks were people's, a lot of people's saving grace, mm -hmm. a peaceful place they could go. Um, we're doing a lot with that. And it's all one-time projects because it's one-time money. Okay. And then one other quick thing, and then I'll, I do need to get off because I've got a meeting, but um, Me too. so you know about the flock cameras. Yes. Uh, we're, we have a pilot program right now with our flock cameras. There are 25 of them in place. And just a real quick update. We have through those license plate readers, we've recovered 65 stolen vehicles. We've, um, We've found 11 missing persons. We've seized 28 guns and the number of people charged with crimes just because they were picked up on the license plate reader, which was able to trans, you know, transfer back to other information. We've charged 116 people with crimes. Mm. So uh, this is a pilot until next spring, but so far we're having some very good uh, successes. And I think it's important for people to know that. Yeah, because obviously there have been privacy concerns over those cameras, but uh, that's an interesting uh, counterpoint you just provided us. Um, 
Well, Thank you it's for... important. information's important, right? So I, I think that people need to know that. All right. Um... There you have it, folks. Lexington Mayor Linda Gorton. Uh, thank you so much for coming out today, uh, Mayor Gorton. Thank you, you very much day. for having me. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.